So before I came to Calvary, I actually worked at a university. I worked at Grandview University in Des Moines, Iowa. I worked at the church that was located on that uh, college campus. And every Tuesday at 11 o'clock, the whole campus would shut down and we would have chapel time. And it was just about a half an hour where people were invited to sort of uh, put their studies away and then devote that time to God. And so we would host chapel at the church that I worked at. And so often uh, it was just this small worship service. A lot of students use that time to like get a coffee or do something else. So this small worship service is really about, about 50 people kind of on average. And so oftentimes we would give students the opportunity to try and preach, an opportunity to lead that worship service. One week, uh, we invited this incredible student named Joel to come and give the message there in chapel. Uh, Joel, he was this uh, energetic wrestler. He was this lightweight, but he had this charisma that just drew people to him. Everybody wanted to be his friend. He had gotten to go to Grandview on a, on a wrestling scholarship, but he was from Portland, Oregon. He was just this really fun human to be around. And so when we asked him to preach, he was really nervous, but he said that he would try it. And, and if that was what God was calling him into, that he would absolutely do it. So the Tuesday came and it was time for Joel to preach. And, and what happened was, is that our chapel attendance, it exploded because he was there. The entire wrestling team made sure that they came and sat in the pews of this tiny little church chapel. And Joel, uh, he was nervous. He was so scared. He was holding on to his music stand, but you could see that one of his legs underneath was shaking. He was trembling as everyone piled into the sanctuary just to hear Joel preach. He was shaking uncontrollably. And the whole time I just stood in the back and I kept thinking, oh my gosh, how brave is this student? How vulnerable to proclaim his faith in front of this college campus as well as in front of his whole team, all his peers. And here's the thing, despite his uncontrollable shaking, despite all of his nerves, he preached so beautifully. And it was incredible to see how moved that entire chapel service was. You see, when Paul first entered Corinth, he describes his meetings with the Corinthians in the most humble way. He said they came in with fear, with weakness, with trembling. He came in humility uh, because it was not of his own power, but of the power of God, which is really interesting for us to read about in this passage. In the book of Acts, which comes earlier in the Bible, but it's this history book of the early church. In the book of Acts 17, we learn that before Paul came to Corinth, he actually went to Athens, to the cultural center of all of Greece. And when he was in Athens, Paul used all his oratory skills in order to sort of impress people and try and convince them that they needed to convert to this new, brand new uh, following of Jesus Christ, to convert to what it meant to be a Christian at that time. Paul pulled out all the stops. He used his oratory skills to go toe to toe with the Greeks to prove that his point was correct. The problem was, is that as he debated and countered every argument, he intellectualized the heck out of it. But at the end of the day in Athens, when Paul tried to preach the gospel there, he only actually had a few people convert to this new Christianity. So when Paul walked into Corinth, he walked in with humility. He knew that it wasn't about his ability to convince people to follow this Jesus guy, but he knew that instead it was what God had to do to work through Paul. He, his posture had changed. Paul had changed through those two experiences. And when Paul entered Corinth, he decided that he just only had to lean on the Holy Spirit uh, and the power of God to proclaim God's own gospel. But what happened then, when he surrendered it and let go and walked in with humility, the church in Corinth, it was, it was born and it grew. And in chapter two, Paul is reminding the Corinthians about the posture that he encountered them in the first place, this humble posture where he was just letting God use him and kind of going along for the ride instead of trying to prove it to everyone around him. He's reminding them that God works in our weaknesses oftentimes and not in our strength. God worked in Paul's weaknesses and not in Paul's strengths. So what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us as we think about what it means for us to live the good life, as we look at our lives? 
You see, for so many of us, so often our ego, it kicks in and we want to prove something, don't we? We want to earn something or, or do something ourselves. We want to use all our mastery of debate or whatever it is and all of the circumstances in our life so we can get these little gains so that we can keep our ego going. But what Paul is teaching us is that it's just in the places where we are lacking, in the places where we are weak or not awesome, the places where we are shaking uncontrollably, those places are the places in which we are dependent on God's work through our lives and God's work in the world. We're dependent on God in those places. So whenever we're experiencing like a, a ceiling or a frustration, when we invite God in to do God's work, it's not even our work in the first place. The other thing I want you to note in this section is in verse two, when Paul says this, he says, for I've decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, him crucified there in the original Greek, it's actually written in the perfect tense, meaning that it's not something that happened in the past. Jesus wasn't crucified just in the past, but Jesus is the crucified one. Pairing Jesus with this imagery of crucifixion, that Jesus died and took all of that suffering on for us, this is really important. And it's still active in that Greek perfect tense, which reminds us that Jesus is in the actions that kind of feel like they're crucifying us. Jesus is involved intimately in our suffering and our struggles and our pain. Jesus is with us in our waiting and all of the things that have to come in that. So it's active and present, whether we have fear or we're trembling. Jesus is in that with us. I think that's a pretty cool image for us to take away today. And as for Joel, <laughs> from that shaky, shaky uh, first sermon there in chapel. He is finishing up seminary from college wrestler to Pastor Joel. I'm so proud of him, but it shows us how much God works through humility. So here's our questions for today. When is a time that you thought something was going to go great, but then it didn't actually turn out that way? And number two, when is the time when you actually had to let something go, when you actually surrendered and allowed God to work through you? What did that look like in your life?